Charles Dubronx Oliveira was a slow cooked, methodically developed talent who turned into a world champion from a scrappy prospect in front of UFC audiences around the world. Oliveira's striking largely relies on the mechanics of one punch, the left hook. He largely uses it as a check hook while retreating in order to counter or interrupt the striking offense offered by his opponents. The left hook doesn't always land and when he misses by throwing behind their head, he uses that position to initiate a clinch exchange. Oliveira tends to be taller than his opponents and that helps him in abusing his opponents in the Muay Thai clinch where he rifles in knees, elbows, and uppercuts. For a jiu-jitsu fighter, it is ironic that Oliveira is very educated in striking principles in the clinch, finding openings for knees and elbows but doesn't have many trips or throws in his tool bag to use while clinching. In the Gaethje fight, Oliveira exhibited a near Jose Aldo level of disdain for leg kicks, managing to check nearly every kick that Gaethje had to offer. Oliveira used Gaethje's forward momentum against them, crashing forward and forcing ugly clinch situations and dirty boxing. However, Oliveira's tall stature in the tie clinch allows for wrestlers he's facing to grab a body lock in order to advance their own wrestling exchanges, and that could lead to takedowns against fighters like Islam Mahachev. Another staple in Dubronx's tie based striking is his constantly probing front kick, not a teep. A teep is like a straight or a jab, and a front kick is like an uppercut, which he targets both the body and head with in order to sap the gas tank, push his opponent back, or maintain the long distance between the two. However, Oliveira's bottom grappling game and chin allows him to be reckless, and thus he throws jumping front kicks, crane kicks, and flying knees to pressure forward and close distance. Oliveira's stand-up game also utilizes a stiff leg kick, more recently targeting the calf like the rest of the MMA meta, although he doesn't leg kick as often as he should. The constant movement of Oliveira's lead leg allows him to feint the leg raise, which he can use to bring his opponent's hand down to try and parry it, back them up, or to close distance. Charles's tall posture and high guard presents a vulnerability for his opponents to exploit, as he is much more susceptible to attacks to the body. Stiff body shots are also a great tool for calming down reckless pressure fighters like Charles Oliveira. But what allows Dubronx the privilege of being a reckless pressure fighter in the striking? His vaunted grappling offense. For a fighter whose deadliest tools consist of submission grappling skill, Dubronx's takedown ability is lackluster. When in a tie clinch, Oliveira hasn't demonstrated an ability to sweep or throw opponents and his wrestling leg attacks mostly end in a stuffed takedown where he pulls guard. However, Oliveira is just as deadly off his back as he is on your back and he has an active guard. He rarely lays in guard with his legs locked around his opponent looking to survive or stall instead constantly offering up submission attempts that he uses to sweep or submit his opponents. 
All of their sweeps off bottom are not sweeps per se, like a butterfly sweep, elevator hook sweep, or a flower sweep. Rather, position reversals that he gained after engaging in one of the three sister submissions. That being the triangle choke, armbar, and omoplata. In this clip against Kevin Lee, Oliveira shows himself rifling through the armbar, omoplata, and triangle choke within a matter of seconds. Charles also possesses one of the deadliest headlocks in MMA, rivaling that of Tony Ferguson, as he isn't afraid to <clears throat> not be silly, jump the ghillie, pursuing guillotines if he is ever shot in on or ends up in the front headlock position. He also favors the anaconda choke, however, instead of falling to a hip and rolling to finish it, Dubronx opts to sit into it like you would a guillotine choke. Dubronx can find the back and threaten submissions like the rear naked choke and even pull off a calf slicer as he can take the back on the feet and the ground. Charles's ability to use his legs in a fight is quite frankly ridiculous. Oliveira can start leg entanglements while in full guard, half guard, and even bottom side control. He uses these entanglements to off balance his opponents in order to keep them from settling into a control position to force them to keep moving and scrambling in hopes of being able to either finish the leg lock or find an opportunity to sweep, submit, or escape. As one would guess, an ability to force your opponent to keep moving proves to be very useful against a wrestler who gives Oliveira just the slightest bit of space to start moving on bottom. However, playing with leg locks is a double-edged sword as you could end up getting pounded out regardless or fall into a heel hook yourself. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and follow the other socials in the description down below.